Tom Bin have a new tote pack backpack called the Cambiata. It's been announced, it's been up for pre-order, pre-order has closed, it's in production but it is yet to ship. However, we managed to get our hands on one. Here it is. I've been using it for about a week. I'm going to walk you through everything and share my feelings and boy, do I have some feelings. But first, hello, my name is Roland from Rush Faster and at Rush Faster we do guides and walkthroughs bringing you better gear and better ways to carry. If you feel that's just the ticket, then like, subscribe, bell, newsletter and enjoy the ride. Now a couple of things I have to be upfront about in this video. Firstly, I have coronavirus and that is why my voice sounds funny. Secondly, I am a massive Tom Bin fan. I own a bunch of their bags. I bought my wife one of their bags. The Synapse 19 is one of my high rotation EDC bags. I used the Synapse 25 when I one bagged it around Europe in the before times. Us Tom Bin fans call ourselves Binions. We're a pretty cool group. Anyway, with that disclaimer out of the way, I can assure you that this will not be a Tom Bin love fest. In fact, because I'm such a fan, I'm probably going to be a little bit more critical than I usually would be. You see, I have high expectations for everything this company does because they've knocked it out of the park so many times. The designs are innovative, the build quality and craftsmanship is outstanding, the materials are great, and their customizations through colours and modularity are extensive. Now, the inspiration for the Cambiata came about from the Tom Bin forums. Forum members had a list of requests for features that they wanted to see in a new Tom Bin design. The main requests were for something that was sleek on the outside but had all of the usual Tom Bin organisation on the inside. They wanted it to be convertible from one form to the other and ideally they wanted it to stand up on their own. So, does the Cambiata meet those forum members' expectations? Well, I'm not a forum member, but we're going to look at the Cambiata anyway, so let's find out. Now I want to start with the look of this bag because the first carry is with the eyes as they say in friends. It's unmistakably Tom Bin with the black zippers framing large portions of the bag. By the way this colour is burnt orange in ballistic nylon. The black version would be a bit sleeker because the zippers would be camouflaged against the black but even here there's minimal fuss. Every part of this bag has a use. There's no molly, there's no lash points, there's no compression straps. You get what you get. It's a bold design that declares function over form and makes no apologies for either. It's quite brutal in a design sense. And it's rectangular cuboid shape. Rectangular cuboid. I looked it up. It's rectangular cuboid shape makes it feel more like a piece of luggage or a utility bag than it does an EDC pack. <coughs> <coughs> But I have to admit, the look has grown on me and I've begun to embrace it. It's a confident bag. It's happy not being like every other bag on the market. And I can see the nod to the more traditional canvas totes in the design. Okay, so that's the looks. Now it either fits your style or it doesn't, and it doesn't care either way. So let's take a closer look. The external material is Blue Sign certified high tenacity ballistic nylon, which means that it meets high environmental standards. It's a really tough material with a slightly thick weave and has some rough texture on the hand. Listen. This colour is burnt orange, it's not currently listed on the website so I'm not sure if they sent me a new colour or if it's just out of production but it's also offered in aubergine, coyote, black, deep blue, nebulous which is a grey and ursa which is a brown. Now these black hems around the side are actually some piping and this helps give the bag structure and allows it to stand up on its own even when it's empty and I know a lot of people like that. The Cambiata has five external pockets. This big pocket at the front here is, is an open dump pocket which works really well for magazines. <laughs> <laughs> Remember magazines? Or a book, or it's, it could be a place to stick your umbrella. Um, the pocket is tight enough that it remains flush to the body of the bag, but then it's loose enough to fit in larger items. So it's really easy to get your hand and fish things out of it. I've just got a book in there. Moving to the side, there are these two pockets that are stacked on top of each other. And as far as I can tell, these pockets are identical inside. They feature the same number eight YKK water resistant racket coil zipper as used on the rest of the bag. And these Tombin zippers, um, they've included some zipper pulls for you to attach your them yourself, but I haven't I haven't put them on there yet. Now these are your quick access external pockets. They're not going to fit your sunglasses, but I am keeping my Nomad card wallet in there and my earbuds as well. And then in the other one, I have some glasses cleaners because I'm spectacled. It's field notes, oh, Tom Bin label, a uh, Nomad pen, which is very nice, and then some masks as well. So a bit of room. You can see I can I can get my whole fist in there. And here we can see a little bit of the internal uh, Cerulon material. It's 210 Cerulon in Mountain Grey and each of these pockets has one o-ring for attachments. I've actually included a key leash or a uh, lash 
point um, in, in, in this pocket here. So these are two, so you can put your keys on there or you could use one of the little pouches that Tom Bin also sells or a pouch from another manufacturer. On the other side of the pack, there is one big vertical pocket and this is the water bottle pocket. And it fits my 750 mil Camelback chute quite comfortably. And when that's in use as a water bottle pocket or whatever else you wanna put in there, that is gonna eat a little bit into the main compartment. And there's a nice little home for your zipper there, which is just one of those small details that Tom Bin does really well. Turning the pack around, we have the laptop compartment and it's got a little zipper pull which has actually been pre-installed. And this is a different zipper pull to the ones that they've supplied for me to attach. This one has actually has a little bit of uh, curvature and some nice grip as well for the thumb. So you can just sort of grab it. And... The laptop compartment will fit a laptop up to 14 and a half inches by 10 inches in size. And you can measure your laptop if you'd like, but it fits my 14 inch MacBook Pro with, uh, with some height to spare but um, not a lot in the sides. The laptop compartment is raised and it has some padding on both sides and as well on the bottom of the bag. There's no back panel in this pack, so the laptop will sit against your back if you carry it in backpack mode or against, I guess, your thigh in tote mode. But the padding does a nice job of making it a comfortable carry, so that's all right. There's a one inch piece of webbing as a grab handle on top. It works fine and it feels like a nice piece of material, but there's no padding or anything. Tombin does actually use this style of grab handle on a lot of their packs, so they've obviously decided that it works well. It's fine for this bag. Um, as, like there's plenty of other places that you can grab this pack. So that's all right. Then we have the shoulder strap for tote carry. This is a, an adjustable and removable strap. You can remove it from these G hooks here. Sort of just clips off comes out, goes back in. Nice and easy. The shoulder strap is made of the same material from the grab handle and it feels nice. It's smooth and it's soft, but it feels high quality and strong. It's, it's thick enough to distribute some weight across the shoulder, but with no padding, you're gonna quickly feel a heavy load and it can get quite long. So it's gonna fit a variety of body types, but for me, it doesn't cinch down short enough to carry by your side, at least. Yeah, not for me. Now for the back panel, and there's quite a bit going on here. As with most hybrid tote backpacks, the stowing of the shoulder straps is inelegant. They're not too bothersome once they're tucked away, but folding straps and cramming them in sleeves feels a little clumsy. I'll show you. Now I'm leaving the sternum strap on, and if I was gonna be carrying it in tote mode all the time, I would probably, probably take that off. As they're, they're away. I kind of wish that these straps came off completely and you attach them and reattach them via G-hook like, like the shoulder strap here. I personally am not a fan of hybrid tote backpacks and it's for this reason. If I knew I was only gonna use this bag as a tote, I would even consider removing the shoulder straps. With that said, it's nice to have the option to throw the bag on your back if you are in a situation that's, that's an easier mode of carry. And I do like the way that these wings tuck nicely out of the way at the bottom. That's very clever. The straps themselves are the same straps found on the Tombin Zeitgeist and Paradigm backpacks. And they're fine straps. Like, they have some cushioning, they're a nice width, and they're comfortable. But Tombin make the best straps on the market. And these are not the best straps on the market. Let me show you the best straps on the market. This is the Tombin Synapse 25. This is the current model, so it has the updated straps. These are the Tombin edgeless straps and they are amazing. They're thick and they're firm, but they're soft and they're thin. They're incredible. The only other straps, in my opinion, that come close to this are the Goruck straps and they even need to be broken in before they get this comfortable. So, these straps are fine and it's really not fair to expect the edgeless straps to make an appearance here. These are only part-time straps and the edgeless straps probably wouldn't work in this scenario anyway. Okay, let me show you what it looks like on. Now, for reference, I'm 5'9 and about 75 kilos. There I am. Pretending to casually go out for a walk in my own backyard. Now I'm pretending there's not a dead branch in my face. That's acting. The included sternum strap actually helps a lot with the comfort of this bag, and I wouldn't usually use a sternum strap on a 21 litre pack, but it helps hold the pack in place when it's on the shoulders and on the back. Okay, let's take a look inside. Now this D mouth opening is plenty easy to unzip. Tombin zippers are always great. They're just so smooth. There's a zippered mesh pocket on the top flap. And this is up out of the way, so if you've got something you don't want squished, like sunglasses or a banana, this is where you put them. The mesh is really, it feels really good. It's really thick mesh. It doesn't feel like it's gonna rip or, or tear or, or anything like that. Inside, I've got my sunglasses and my keys. And then I think there's, there's another O-ring. 
up in there, so another place to put a uh, key ring. Inside here, we just have a big bucket. It's one of those big bucket bags. And we, can, we can see a bit more of that grey Cerulon there. Now, uh, this is really good for unusually shaped or bulky items, but I just use pouches, um, and then I might throw a jumper and a few other items in there, which I'll, I'll get to in a minute. Now, I've been laying my pouches flat up against the back of the bag when filling up the main compartment, as I found that the, uh, the bag can sort of bulge easily, and I don't like that, so I've just been laying them flat. And this is the Tom Bin side effect, which is a very handy little pouch for all my personal items, deodorant, medicine, stuff like that. Stuff that no one needs to see. And then this is the Tech Dop Kit from uh, Harbour London. I've only just started using this, but it's really nice. It's very soft. It's full grain leather, so it's going to age very well. And inside I keep my laptop charger, some dongles, hard drives. It's lined with like a soft fabric as well. And then there's some internal pockets and some leather loops just for organizing things. It's a really elevated tech kit, so as well as looking nice, I like that it's slim so I can, I can Tetris it all really easily. Now there's this big elastic pocket alongside the back of the bag, and then there's also two small elastic pockets down the side of the bag. And there's some nice symmetry here because these are all matching to the uh, external pockets, and then the laptop pocket there as well. In the big one, I'm keeping my wireless Apple keyboard, and my roost stand. If you haven't seen a roost stand before, these are great for working on the go. They fold out and become a great little laptop stand so you're not craning your neck to see your computer. And then they pack up really small. Roost, really great. Now this elastic is firm, but it gives easily. This is a similar pocket to the ones on the Synapse. And I've owned a Synapse for years and I haven't had any issues with this becoming too loose. I see this as a handy optional divider. If you don't want to use it, it doesn't get in the way. There are two O-rings above either side of this pocket here. And then there's, a, there's an O-ring above each of these smaller side pockets as well. And I keep my Apple mouse in the top one. And at the moment, I have these, this is a pack of these handy Tom Bin zipper pulls that I was talking about earlier. Okay, let's see how many cans of beer we can fit in the Cambiata. Now, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would say we'd be able to get a whole case of beer in here. Oh. Can we, can we? That is quite impressive. Now I want to reiterate just how well made and how nice these materials are. All Tom Bin bags are high quality. In fact, they've kind of ruined a lot of other bags for me. They've sort of made other bags, which are fine, just kind of feel cheaper. From the ballistic nylon on the outside, the ripstop on the inside, the zippers, the mesh, the, the straps, the grab handles, it's, it's all, it's all really, really nice. And you know, you feel like you can trust it, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to baby this bag, you can just go about your business with it and it's, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna do its job. Now this is a bag that will cost you 200 US dollars and I think for the build quality, the materials and the design, it's a bargain. There are, there are far worse bags that you can pay far more for. Now this may not be the Tom Bean bag for you, but I do encourage you to jump on their website and have a look at what else they offer. In fact, if you've liked anything that you've seen in this video, I will leave links in the description below and you can go and check out those. If you make a purchase through those links, they do go a long way to supporting the work that we do here on Rush Faster, so we really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos from us, then make sure you're subscribed. Until the next one, I'm Roland from Rush Faster, and this has been the Tom Bin Cambiata. Take care.